and welcome back to the Turdford Network. Okay, so today's video actually finishes where my physical science energy video left off. We looked at two equations in that video. One was in a potential energy for gravity. Some books will put a little G on there just to let you know this is potential energy for gravity. But I don't do that. I usually write PE equals M. GY. So if you want to find potential energy due to something being in the air, you just need to make sure that your mass and your mass needs to be in kilograms to work these problems. G is the same G it's always been being, 9.8 meters per second square. And then all Y is going to be, all Y is literally all it is, it's basically how high. That's all we're looking at it as. And we're going to be looking at height, and it should be measured in meters when you're doing these problems. Now, PE over here, PE, potential energy, it's just going to be measured in joules. All measurements of energy are going to be in joules. So that's your one equation that you're going to need to do these problems. Now, this is the equation to use when something's being lifted. Now, we also have a second equation, and that equation is how we can find potential energy in like a rubber band or a spring. And I'll put a little S on that, although I, I'll be honest, I usually, when I'm working them, I don't even put an S on it. I'm just going to write equals one-half kx squared. And if you saw the other video, you already got kind of an introduction to this. Again, the potential energy part will be measured in joules. Any type of energy will be in joules. Uh, K. K is known as spring constant, which literally is how springy is your spring. And spring constant is measured in a very distinct unit, N slash M. Nothing else really looks like that, which makes it very easy to identify K in a problem. The last thing over here is this X. It's not the first time you've seen me write an X before. The definition, like science-wise, would be this. It's spring displacement, which literally just means how far did you stretch the rubber band. And what messes y'all up is these problems, and it's going to be measured in meters. And what kind of goofs y'all up is on this stretch, it's very common for a problem to give you like two measurements of a spring. Say that a spring is uh, 0.2 meters long, and then somebody grabs hold of the spring, and now it's 0.46 meters long. So what is X going to actually be in the problem? Well, X is just going to be that. That difference, which in this case, 0.2 from 0.46 would be 0.26. And that would be your X for the problems. Uh, make sure that you always do that in meters, though. So let's go and let's do the first problem that we've got on our list. What is the potential energy? Oh, no. It didn't say what kind of potential energy. Well, let's just read. If it's a spring, we'll do one. If it's, in this case, you got a mass, a child standing on top of a playground slide. Hey, that's easy. Uh, the equation for finding potential energy for an object up in the air is just MGY. So all we have to do is mass is 40 times G, which is 9.8, times the height, which is that 2. And that's all we've got to do to get an answer for this one. So we could about do it kind of in our head here. But anyway, uh, let's see if I can get this on 40 times 9.8. Come on, 8 times 2 equals 784. And the unit is joule. And so that is the answer to that problem. So that's not too bad. Uh, let's go on and do example problem B. I think everybody's probably ready to move along with it. That's an easy problem. B, right off the bat, I see the word spring in problem B. So spring, I'm going to go ahead and write P-E. I'm going to put the little S there. P-S equals one-half K-X squared. So I'm going to read the question now. And right off the bat, I see this. 5.2 newton meter. And I even see the word constant there. This is that K. It's very identifiable. Now check this out. The problem actually gives you two lengths for the spring. 
it says that the spring is initially, that's a terrible looking spring, 2.45 meters. And then it comes back and says somebody stretched the spring and now the spring is 3.57 meters. So the big question would be, what is X in the problem? Well, what do you have to do with those two numbers to get your X? What am I going to do? Go for it. Subtract them. Very good. I promise I'm not talking to myself. There's actually people here this time. And I'll hit that, and our difference is 1.12. So X in this problem, X is actually 1.12 meters. There's my X. And the problem just said find the elastic potential energy. So all I'm going to do is PE equals 1 half. K was 5.2. And x is 1.12 meters square. About the only thing you could do to mess this up would be typing this in your calculator wrong. Now, I don't usually type. Some people do this. They do like 1 half times, oops, times. I do not ever type it in the calculator that way. 1 half is just 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times 5.2 times. 1.12. Notice, what is the only thing that gets squared in this? It's just the x term. So equals, do that conversion, 3.26. And once again, the unit for energy is a, is a joule. Very good. The unit for any kind of energy. Here, pop quiz. If you were given Einstein's famous E equals MC square, take a wild unit, what the unit is for E in that. Joule. Very good. The unit for energy is a joule. So that's a very easy little concept. We got one more. This is going to be actually just a seven-minute long video, looks like. C. Last question. 12-kilogram object has a stored energy of 2,400 joules when raised above a surface. Which potential energy equation are we going to use? MGY, 1 half kx squared. Well, it says how high. So that means we're going to use the PE equals MGY. This time, let's look at what the problem gave us. It gave us 12 kilograms, so that's a mass. And then it says a stored energy, a potential energy of 2,400. How high? Well, about the only way we could mess this problem up would be in the math. So this is going to be 2,400 equals 12 times 9.8 times y. Now, algebraically on this, what do we need to do to actually get this problem math-wise for an answer here? Any ideas? We need to multiply the 12 to 9.8 first. Very good. So 12 times 9.8. It was 117.6, so that's 117.6y, and now to finish the problem, divide both sides by 117.6. And so 2400 divided by 117.6 equals this object was raised 20.4 meters into the air and so that's what we did now i this is not a problem but i would be curious could y'all do the math on this what if what if the problem was a one half kx square question here let's just make up a few random numbers what if it gave you a pe i don't know 20 let's make it easy 20 equals one half let's say that k is let's make it k really easy four x square. Could y'all do the math on solving this one for x? Can anybody in the room with me walk me through that? What should you do first? Up, a half of 4. Half times 4 would be 2 x square. And then what should you do? Divide both sides by 2. So you'd end up with 20 divided by 2. 20 divided by 2 would be 10 and you've done this before. This is x squared, so if you want to actually get x, take a square root of both sides. Square root of x, uh, a lot of times we take multiple choice tests on like uh, 
in physics uh, without calculators. Could you do a rough estimate on which one you would look for? What if you didn't get to use a calculator on this test? What would be some ideas? How would you do that? Well, how about this? Square root of 9 would be what? 3. And then you could say square root of 16 is 4. So if you was taking a multiple choice test and you didn't have a calculator, you know the answer would have to be what to this? 3 point something. And that's most of the time on these tests where you don't get to use calculators. That's the reality. There will only be like of A, B, C, D, or E. There would only be one that was actually in that area. But here, we've got a calculator, so we'll just do it. 3.3 something maybe? 3.16. Ah, I missed it. So the answer for X is 3.16 meters. And I threw that in there for a little bonus round. But anyway, this should get you a nice good start on doing these problems. Anyway, uh, later, peace out. And don't forget, it's National Log Cabin Awareness Day. That's a lie. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Not really. I don't care. Later. Deuces. Peace out.